Ball Z came calling. Talk to us about how that came to be. Were you in the right place at the right time? Yep. Were there agents involved? No, tell us how you got started. Buddy. Oh, I just did. No, uh, so here's the deal. I had, when I moved to Dallas, Fort Worth, I started a theater company. And, you know, actors, we're being actorly. And we did an improv show, and we were practicing for the improv show one night, and my buddy Brad Jackson, who plays Oolong in DBC, he came in and he was like, hey man, you should go audition for this, this Dragon Balls thing. And I was like, Dragon Balls? That sounds naughty. And he was like, no, no man, it's, it's, uh, it's Japanese anime. And I was like, okay, then it's definitely naughty. And he was like, no, just call this dude, his name's Chris Savage, just give him a call and, and he'll give you an audition. And I was like, okay, cool. So I like, beep, 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 and I called. And it was like, hey, yeah, uh, <clears throat> hello, uh, yeah. It was... And I was like, hey man, uh, my buddy Brad said that you're looking for people to audition for Dragon Balls. And he was like, oh yeah, actually it's uh, Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z. You pronounce the Z like the letter. Yeah, a lot of people get that confused. And then he was like, you want to come audition like at four o'clock or five o'clock? That'd be cool. And I was like, yeah, that sounds He was like, hold on, let me get a pencil. And I was like, this is the weirdest audition I've ever booked in my life. Because I was in Chicago, the auditions were very, you know, uh, uh, structured affairs with receptionists and agents and casting directors in specific times. And this was a dude looking for a pencil. And uh, he was like, yeah, man, why don't you come in tomorrow at like five o'clock? And I was like, okay, cool. And he hung up and I was like, I wonder where I'm supposed to go. And then he called back and he was like, yeah, man, I forgot to tell you where to go. Like, uh, you know, uh, North Richland Hills, like the roof snow exit, there's like a, there's like a, a gas station on the, like you can get to the parking lot through the gas station and like, it, that's the best way to get to the parking lot. So yeah, we'll see you tomorrow, man. And then I, I showed up and uh, I auditioned. The first role I auditioned for was Garlic Jr. I'm going to push you into the dead zone. <laughs> He was like, that was perfect, man. That was great. Uh, you want to like go ahead and record it? And I was like, sure, let's go ahead and record it. I've never done that before where you audition and then immediately record. So I was sure this was some sort of scam and I was going to be selling vitamins after it. I didn't know what to do. And so I just recorded an hour of Garlic Jr. to start. And uh, as I was walking out the door, he like ripped a half a sheet of a napkin and he was like, oh, I need your address so you can get paid. And I was like, yeah, right, I'm getting paid. But I gave him my address then anyway. And then uh, sure enough, like two weeks later, I got a check for $35. And I was like, oh yeah, all right. Really? <laughs> and I didn't, know, I didn't know it would be a big deal. I didn't know it was a big deal till after it was a big deal. Had any, like even before you got to this audition and then you got the guy with a really awesome voice in his own right, did you hear anything about this at all? I mean, did it even exist in your, in your orbit? No, DBZ did not. I knew Japanese anime from college because uh, in Chicago there was this awesome video store that had all, all these cool indie movies and they had a whole section called anime. And we used to go like pick out movies. We tried to watch different anime series, Cowboy Bebop and whatnot, but they, they, they were in four episode VHS cassettes and they'd always, they would never one through four would never be there and you can't start with you know, five through eight, and so we didn't watch the series uh, that much, but we watched uh, a lot of movies. I remember the first one that impressed me a whole bunch was Akira. Uh, oh, man, yeah, yeah no doubt. Good. Akira was fantastic. Yeah, blew course, my mind. Yeah, Cowboy Bebop was there. Yeah. I mean, for me, like growing up, obviously, I got, uh, you know, Wicked City, uh, Ninja Scroll was in there, all of that stuff, and, it, and just the art was so amazing, and yeah. stuff that really wasn't being seen over here. But now, it's like this pop culture explosion. It's just gone absolutely insane. Talk to me about your time. You go from 1988, and you're still doing work right now in 2019, which is remarkable. The longevity is there for you. Talk to me about the character spread over the Dragon Ball Z series and the movies. How many characters are you up to right now across the entire spectrum of Dragon Ball? 11 billion. No, uh, and it's technically not. 1988 is when it came out in Japan. We recorded it in 1998. So I've yeah. only been doing it for 20 years, not 30 years. Yeah. I would love to have done it my junior year in high school, but I was too young and it wasn't over here. Yeah, I started with Garlic Jr., Mustard, which was one of his henchmen, and then I was Android 17, Emperor Pilaf, Master Shen, Mr. Shu, the Invisible Guy, uh, uh, Emperor Pilaf, I said that, Kibito, Android 13, look at my trucker hat, uh, 
Um, who else? <laughs> Picture that comes up out there. They, they love that. I, I, that's a joke from DBC Abridged, which is an awesome series if you haven't seen it. Yeah. And you love DBC. Those guys are fantastic. Uh, Lanny um, did a Yu Yu Hakusho Abridged, and Kie is another one of my characters, and he did the Abridged uh, Yu Yu Hakusho and had me play a villain in it, which was fun. You think like a bad guy was really cool. A bad guy uh, fighting against my own character, so that was cool. So Dragon Ball, I mean, I sit and think of it, I mean, it's it's so much fun to watch. Now, for you, did that put like a test and a strain on your vocal abilities? Because I'm thinking explosions, I'm thinking fireballs, insane action on the screen, lots of screaming and yelling. Yeah, I, I am the luckiest DBZ uh, actor in the universe because I play Android 17, and if you ever watch those fights, you know, the other characters will be going, ha, 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 and Android 17 just kind of goes. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't say a lot. And his, uh, I remember in the audition for Android 17, I, I came in with all these ideas like, I am Android 17, and Sabat was like, No, 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 just relax, relax, don't, like, just relax. And I was like, Okay, I'm Android 17. He's like, No, man, seriously. Like, don't, just, just relax. And I'm like, I'm Android 10. He's like, no, man, just don't do anything. And I was like, I'm Android 17. He's like, that's perfect. <laughs> I was like, I'm not, I'm not doing anything. I'm just talking. I'm not even. He's like, that's you're an Android. That's all you do. And I was like, okay. I guess, I guess this is the easiest.